so today we are going to talk about DC motor interfacing <coughs> So why the people need this uh, DC motor uh, interfacing with our controllers especially because we are going to use so many applications this DC motors towards uh, robotics development or towards so general any uh, conveyor belts or if you want to design any engines the people will concentrate on this DC motors like if you go for a simple construction of a simple DC motor so once you find a physical device so you will find the two poles for your dc motor simply which is plus and minus so this plus and minus like you people have to follow in the case of dc in a very strict manner like whenever you are following the polarities like in the case of ac so you people will uh, there is no bother about like if you are looking to connect the anything with your uh, AC source okay so you people don't bother about the phase neutral or if you go for reverse connection then it is not a problem but coming to the DC devices so you people have to go for very strict manner towards polarities like which is plus and which is minus and with even source also like the people will represent this DC source like this so this should be plus and this should be your minus okay so this this DC motors which are uh, very uh, simple to control with the help of your controller devices and DC motors are available in a different parameters like to, so you have to observe the three important parameters towards your DC motors which is how much voltage it need to operate and how much current which is going to draw to run and the third one is RPM so here RPM stands for rotations per minute so whenever you are going to work with any DC motor you people have to concentrate on these three important parameters how much voltage it needs to work and how much current which is, which is going to consume in the running and how, may, how many how much of RPM which is going to make so R, here RPM stands for rotations per minute so how many rotations it will do for your uh, minute generally the motors are available from 5 volts onwards like 5 volts and uh, 12 volts or 24 volts and even the rpm which should be 10 rpm or 50 rpm or 20 rpm or 100 rpm so the motors will available in uh, different parameters like whenever you are going to control the dc motors with the different characteristics what is your approachment with your controllers like whenever you are looking to control these kind of uh, simple dc motor with your microcontrollers then which characteristics you have to observe and based on the characteristics of motor individually then you people have to go for uh, driver ISIS like uh, driver unit means like whether you people can drive this DC motor uh, uh, to suitable this characteristics that's that too always uh, and already we talk about uh, whenever you are looking to interface with the microcontrollers then you people have to concentrate on the VA characteristics of device so here VA stands for voltage and I stands for current okay so these two characteristics you have to know compulsory whenever you are looking to interface something with your controllers so already know the VA characteristics of your IO pin so your IO pin can generate the two logics so what are the VA characteristics of your IO pin in the case of voltage so it can provide uh, either logic 1 or logic 0 right so here logic 1 means it can generate 5 volts and logic 0 means it can generate 0 volts then what about I parameter so if you have voltage at available at I open then something will current also right so then whenever you are looking to check the current how much which is going to generate then it should be milliamps like approximately so which is going to generate 10 milliamps current from the I open so these are the two important parameters about your I open but coming to the motors so these motors are available with different characteristics okay so always which cannot run directly with 5 volts and always a, all the motors doesn't run directly with 12 volts right so and all motors don't have any the same current rating like uh, suppose if you are taking a simple DC motor so whatever you are doing in academic side like in our colleges and labs and all you are going to find a simple DC motor which which is available with a 12 volts or uh, 5 volts with at least they are going to draw uh, in the case of current where they are going to consume 500 milliamps to 1 amp so these are the minimum current rating requirement for your simple DC motors 
and if you probably it should be 100 rpm motor so these are the simple dc motors uh, you people can find in laboratories and all but if you go for real time so based on application requirement the people will go for different characteristics motors okay so coming to this 12 volts dc motor and this 500 milliamps 1 amp current motor and with 100 rpm then i want to control this thing with my microcontroller so whenever i want to interface these characteristics dc motor with my microcontroller so what condition what uh, driver ic i can choose or what way i can control this uh, dc motor with the controller right so this dc motor uh, whenever you are looking to control the device which is very simple you people have to go through a driver ICs so the two driver unit means so you can go through any driver unit so based on characteristics suppose if the transistor supports which can drive your uh, 12 volts and 1 amp current you people can choose transistor itself and whenever you, you want to control this thing with the relays because uh, at this time you people need the knowledge of all switching devices in the electronics like a transistor tri-state buffers or uh, latches or anything whenever whatever the like mos transistors bjt's mosfets any switching component device knowledge you people ne will need here and now what switching component you are going to choose to drive drive this characteristics dc motor like now my assumption is like I'm, I'm going to take 12 volts DC motor with 1 amp current and with 100 RPM DC motor. Okay, so this characteristics motor I want to control. So this DC motor I want to control with a microcontroller. Then uh, uh, which driver I can choose? Either transistor or I can choose any MOSFET or I can go through any driver IC okay so suppose if the transistor supports these things then uh, that's what the people has to choose the switching components based on the sourcing voltage and based on the sinking current and uh, the driving capability of the transistors that's what and the driver IC is also in the driver units also you people will find uh, different series transistors or different family MOSFETs in their drivers okay now I'm going to take a simple driver IC which is a combination of all these uh, tri-state buffers in build and this L293D driver IC so this driver IC it can drive the voltage from 5 volts to 24 volts DC and it can drive maximum 2 amps so again you have to choose the driver ICs also with respect to only these characteristics whether which is going to drive how much voltage maximum and how much current which can drive so coming to the pin diagram of this L293D driver IC which is a simple 16 pin IC so this 16 pin device which can have the pins like first pin is enable and second pin is input 1 and the third pin is output one and fourth pin is ground and fifth pin is also ground and sixth pin output two and seventh pin input two and eighth pin vcc and again from this side again the people will find the same series of pins enable to input three output three ground ground output 4 input 4 VCC see this is the uh, so otherwise if you are looking to know the complete things about this driver IC you can go through the data sheet like so this is the simple 16 pins from your L293D and what is the working of these individual lines like enable so whenever you are activating like what you people will find the inside construction of this driver IC so which is a combination of four tri-state buffers so four tri-state tri buffer means so i think you will people will listen this word in the academic like uh, tri-state buffer means which will consist of three pins the first pin is input and control and output so what is the functioning of this tri-state buffer 
so how it is going to work so whenever you people are going to give some input like a positive voltage to this input line so this control and output gets the conduction like the same way how if you are giving the uh, positive supply to the baseline in the transistor the collector and emitter gets conduction right so the same thing here whenever you are going to give some positive supply to this input line then this control and output will, will get the conduction okay and there is no input here and there is no conduction between control and output okay so again which is going to do the functioning based on the positive voltage of input then your control and output will get conduction now so what can i do here so my source i will connect with this control line either 12 volts or 24 volts and i will connect my load with this output line so whenever i am getting this positive input here to this input line and this control and output will get, get the conduction and because of this 12 volts conduction for your dc motor it will start rotation okay so suppose if you, you want to control this 24 volts like if you are you are looking to control the dc motor with 24 volts just give your supply to this control line as 24 don't think that whatever the voltage you are giving to this input line which is coming to the output line okay so which is the only switching process happens inside for your tri-state buffer whenever you are giving this positive supply to this input line then this control output will get connection between dc motor and source okay so this input will help us to get the connection between dc motor positive line and control line okay so this will happen in all electronic devices but generally people will think that uh, if you are, if i am giving the input 5 volts you are going to get the output from output side okay so it never happens even transistor also will go like work the same way if you are giving positive supply to this baseline only this collector and emitter gets connection whatever the voltage you are providing to collector line you will find in the output side either emitter to collector or collector to emitter okay so now for each input in this l293d ic they are connected in inside this tri-state buffer lines like each input so each input of your uh, driver ic which is connected with the vcc of that vcc means this is your driving voltage so how much you are looking to control how much voltage you are going to give to this output just you have to connect through this vcc line and this input which is help us to provide the logics from your io pins so these inputs you are going to give from this io pins and these outputs you are going to connect our motors so from where you are going to get these outputs from this VCC or ground if you are giving logic one here you people will get the voltage from this VCC line to this DC motor and here also the same thing so now we are looking to control this DC motor in two directions then I will work with the two inputs whenever you are looking for only single direction control then you people can directly use only this uh, single input whenever you are looking to for both operations like uh, whenever you are looking to control the DC motor in two directions then you can choose this input lines so this is a simple process to control your DC motors so based on the driver ICs and based on the switching process so which is most important for us whenever you are looking to control uh, any characteristics DC motor with your controllers so what kind of switching driver what kind of switching device you are going to choose depends on that you can drive the different characteristics DC motors with the help of microcontrollers programming so whenever i am giving logic 1 here and logic 0 here then this dc motor starts clockwise rotation and whenever you want to change the direction for your dc motor now i want to rotate anti clockwise then what i can do i can give logic 1 here and i can give logic 0 here so based on this then uh, the motor is going to change the reaction like uh, if we are providing one zero logic which is going to provide uh, which is going to run in a clockwise direction and whenever you are going to apply this zero one logic for these input lines then which is going to change which is going to change the direction to anti-clockwise so see whenever i am giving logic one here then what happens to this so these 24 volts or 12 volts which will come to this connection and it will reach to dc motor positive line and whenever I am giving logic 0 here, so which is going to give this ground connectivity to this uh, VCC line, sorry, this negative line. So then you people will get the two things for your DC motor. 
for plus I am getting from this VCC line and this ground connection I am getting through this logic 0 ok so this will happens for your DC motor for once it will get the two polarities for this plus and minus it will start the rotation ok whenever you are looking to change <coughs> sorry change the direction for your DC motor then now I am applying to this input line logic 0 and now I am applying logic 1 for this input then now I will get 12 volts here and ground here then this DC motor starts rotation anti-clockwise so this is the simple phenomenon whenever you are going to change like uh, if you have the application like direction control of DC motor then you can easily do this with the help of microcontroller programming thank you